Hey guys, it's July 19th and we're out here doing our mic treatments. Um, this year we're using Apigard again. We used it last year and we had good luck with it. Uh, it it's hot outside. It's about 100 degrees. So you got to be really careful using this stuff. And we're going to be showing you how we do it. Um, we're going to be using a half dose. But we're also going to be coming back through these yards, keeping an eye on our colonies with this heat because we may have to take it off of these colonies and reduce the dose. Uh, you can actually run your bees out of the colony. They'll cluster under the bottom board. Um, they can abscond from it. Uh, so you just got to be careful with it. It works really well. It's thymol. It's, it's, a, it's a natural product. It's, it's not really a hard chemical, but sometimes those more natural the thymol and formic acid can be harder on your bees than the chemical treatment. So you just got to be mindful of it. But we're here today. We're going to show you how we do it. Okay, guys, on this stuff, you want to stir it up really good. And like I said, we're doing a half a dose. A half, the recommended dose is 50 uh, milliliters, but we're only going to do 25. And like I said, we're going to monitor it real closely. And once we get it in our syringe here, it comes with these applicator pads if you buy it by the tubs. We're just going to squirt it onto the applicator pad just like so. And like I said, we use the feeder rim. And what that does, it gives it a little bit of space um, for the bees to actually work that uh, apha guard. Now this, I know you're probably thinking it's going to look a little different, but this super here has no stores in it or no uh, brood in it at all. No eggs. I checked. All it has is some honey. So I'm going to put it on top because I want the bees to, I want that apy guard to be as close to the brood nest as I can get it. Um, and like I say, we'll probably do three rounds of this uh, treatment a week apart with uh, 25 grams or milliliters. So that's what we're doing. We'll take you along. You can really hear them whenever they, they, they're they starting to roar. We're also doing a queen check. We're going to just quick assessment and make sure that they got a queen before we waste our time treating them. Okay, guys, on this colony, it's a double deep. Um, they're looking really good, really nice. This is full of stores up here. If you can look down through here. Now, this double deep has brood. So I'm going to put a feeder rim right on top. This super is almost empty. Uh, we need to take it off, but we're not going to mess with that today. They're strong enough to police it, but we're going to put that feeder rim on. And we're going to put this, uh, since this super's got brood in it, we're going to put it right on top because I want that uh, thyme all to get in it around all the uh, supers that have brood in it. It just makes it easier. And it works for us that way. The most important thing to treating mites is coming back through after your treatment is done and doing a mite wash to see if it worked or not. Because you'd hate to go through all this effort and it not be effective and <laughs> lose your bees because you did your treatment and thought it worked, but in theory, but in reality, it didn't work at all. So. And I've seen that happen a lot. We had that issue with a ape of R a year or so ago. We lost a fair amount of hives because we didn't go back and check as good as we should have. And it just didn't work. So always make sure your treatments work. Okay, guys, on this colony, it's been a dud all year. I should really honestly shake it out, but I'm not going to. They've got a laying queen, and she's, she's trying. She's, she's laying um we'll see what she does if we're gonna get around to feed on these colonies this week uh not dry sugar but they need something today so we're putting some dry sugar on there the directions on this stuff is hit or miss with feeding while you're applying it but i've never had any issues feeding while the apa guard's on um i honestly think it works better if you do feed them because they're more active in the colony to spread it around so that's why that's the way we do it um, but you, you're just gonna have to figure out what works best for you in your own apiary um, but it works fine for us to feed them I'm not you know even the directions say it may be less effective if you're feeding them but we've never had that issue so I mean it works pretty good okay guys on this colony they still got a lot of drone brood uh, real strong colony um, the directions on the Apigard says to use uh, 50 uh, milliliters or grams. I forget how they say it. Um, the syringe is in milliliters. 
and I think it's pretty close to the same but with this heat I'm not comfortable doing that we're still only going to use 25 even though this is a strong colony which is a half a dose um, now keep in mind we'll have to come back and make sure it works and we'll have to do it several probably three times instead of uh, two like they recommend this super is just honey I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to put the apiary guard near the brood nest. Um, the bees will track down through this super into the apiary guard and they'll distribute it just fine. But you want that treatment near the brood. That's, that's where your mites are going to be and that's where you need to hit them at. And like I said, if the, if the temperature was cooler, we would probably use a, about a 30 gram dose. Uh, but the time we need to treat, it's always hot where we're at. So it's usually a 25 gram dose um, where, where we live. So keep that in mind. You can't always go by the directions. You have to experiment with it and see what works best. I'm not telling you to use it off label, but if you put 50 grams of this in, in these colonies, they're toast. It, it, they're, they're done. So uh, in this heat. You know, if it's cooler, you can you can do that just fine. But in this heat, it, they're toast. They're done. Okay, this top super is nothing but stores is what it looks like. So I'm also doing my queen checks right now. So I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to dig into this box a little deeper. Always push your frames back together after you work them. It just makes life a little easier next time you're in the colony. Yeah, they look pretty good, pretty strong for this time of year. Now, keep in mind, where we're at, there's no flow on, we're in a dearth. And these, uh, the queen's going to naturally start declining in her egg laying. Um, so, right now, we're fixing to come through here with these all our bees, and we're going to be giving pollen supplement and uh, one to one sugar water. Yeah, they got brood. It's real spotty looking, but that's that's to be expected this time of year where we're at because she has started um, reducing her her egg laying and I'm okay with that. The main thing is get these mites under control now before it gets any later in the year. Now typically we like to do it around um, the last week in July, but our mite counts are too high right now so we got to go ahead and get a treatment on them. So we got strong bees going into the winter. Again, 25 milliliters out of the syringe. And I, if it may sound confusing, if it is, just leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll, I'll walk you through it the best I can for, for our area. Now, I can't tell you how it'll be in your area. That's something you're gonna have to, have to think about on your temperature. Um, because it's vitally important. And I just put that on without putting a feeder rim. This feeder rim allows a little bit of air space around it. And they seem to work it a lot better if you got it. And it just gives a little more room in the colony for the for ventilation. And honestly, we don't do it because our robin's been pretty bad here lately, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to leave the lid cracked a little bit on these colonies. Okay guys, on this colony it's a double deep. Uh, they're still only getting the 25 milliliters. Um, but this will be a good colony going into winter and you'll have more bees in the springtime with a double deep than you will a single. Why, I don't know, but you do. We well, always do. Um, I even heard Bob Benny say he has the same, same thing. Our only thing is we don't have enough equipment at this point to run everything in double deeps. Uh, but as we move into keeping our just more bee sales in the spring, the double deep, if all you're doing is selling uh, bees, double deeps is the way to go, but we sell a lot of honey too. So we're looking at it, at a, uh, see what's gonna work best for us. This year we went to a deep and a medium to overwinter in. We were doing singles and we really liked it, but our feed bill got so expensive, it's hard to keep up with. Um, so we're gonna do, deep, this one's a deep and a medium just cause we, Put this deep on it because they were policing the cone but she's built it out she's laid in it so we're going to leave it alone and overwinter them in a double deep and this will be a good colony to split from come come springtime
And guys, on, on colonies like this, I don't even bother checking for a queen. I know I should, but when it's 100 degrees out here, they're, they're full of bees. Um, now granted, that's not 100% certain that they've got a queen. She could have swarmed and they didn't requeen herself, but they look pretty healthy. And, you know, I've been doing, keeping bees, I don't know, close to 26 years now, maybe a little longer, I don't know, uh, without doing the math. But with this, it just looks like a good colony. It looks healthy to me, so I'm not going to take the time to take this box off and, you know, stay out here any longer than I have to whenever they, they look okay. So we're just going to go ahead with the treatment. We're going to put it on, and we're going to move on to the next colony. Okay, guys, same thing on this colony. If you look at it, it's full of bees. I can look down into the seams, and it, it's just covered. I'm not worried about it not having a queen. I'm fairly confident that it does. I don't want to... Be out here longer than I have to because it's hot. And we're in a dirt, so the bees are going to be robbing. Um, we're going to get in and out pretty good. Now, if, if one's concerning to me, I'll obviously check, or if they look a little on the small side, I'll check. But I'm not, I'm not worried too much about it. As long as they look healthy. And I know you're saying, well, assumptions. Yeah, and assumptions bite us in the rear end sometimes, but a hundred degree heat will get you too. So, I can replace this colony. I can't replace myself. So, keep in mind, be careful out here in the heat. Okay, guys, on this colony, they look good. They're, they've got a queen, uh, but it is small. This colony is smaller than I like, so... This is a good one to show you. We're going to do uh, a smaller gram of Apigard on this one. And we're going to do about 12 milliliters. Um, just because their size, that'll be sufficient. And we'll come back and we'll do it again in a week. Um, and that'll get our mites under control. Um, like I say, all your colonies are not always going to look the same. And this one should make it. We're going to feed it up heavy and, and get it going and get it ready for winter. But right now I have no issues with it. We're just going to do a smaller dose. Okay, guys, on this colony, you see it's a deep and two mediums. What we do in this case is we treat it like a double deep. Um, but we're still going to keep the dose. We're going to bump it up just a hair on this one because it's super strong. But we're not going to go to a, but maybe to about 30 milliliters. And keep in mind again, we're going to come back through these yards and check on them in a day or so, so see how they're doing. And uh, early in the morning, we're going to come out and check and make sure they're not all hanging out at the front. If they are, we're going to take this treatment off, reduce it, come back and check it again. And if they're still not receptive to it, we'll we'll treat with something else. Um, Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is not the only way to do this. This is our way to uh, treat with Apigard. We like it. You have to be careful with it. There's do's and don'ts with it. If you got any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, we appreciate you watching and happy beekeeping.